I see many Christians struggling with the overconsumption of food and many other vices, but more importantly, the addiction to food is rampant inside of Christianity. I often say that food is the Christian crack. We leave all the other vices, but then I see people suffering with obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, etc., based on lifestyle. Our brains are constantly seeking a dopamine hit to alleviate the many pangs of life. I get that. I see it in my own life. I see that when I get stressed or when I have too many things going on, I have a tendency to either want something sweet or to find distractions. And this is my brain just finding ways to get a dopamine hit. And the solution seems easy. It, it usually is simply stop. Don't do it. But what happens when rationality doesn't assist your will? How do we empower our will to live a free life and regain control and peace in all areas of life? This is what this video is all about. Now, before I go on and I get pegged as a legalist or as I am saying that you have to do specific works in order to glorify God, please hear my heart. I believe that we are saved through faith and repentance alone. I don't believe in, in works as a way to salvation. But I do believe that as a byproduct of being saved, you have fruits in your life. And that's more importantly what I want to talk about. And beyond the fruits, I also want to talk about the power. Because if you say to be a Christian and you say that the Spirit of God lives in you, then the question is, what can't you overcome? Now, I'm not speaking with you from a pedestal or trying to teach you or trying to be a self-righteous person. I'm, I'm speaking to you from personal experience. I had to overcome a lot of vices in my life. 15 years ago, I was caught up in drugs, alcohol. I was caught up in many different things that literally were, were killing me. Uh, I had surgery about five years ago for AFib, a flutter, which is an electrical problem in my heart based on my lifestyle. I had many, many vices. And I can make up a million different excuses, but the truth is there was sin in my life. And if had you said that to me back then, I would have laughed in your face because I wasn't a believer and I didn't even know what the concept of sin really was. And to be quite frank with you, a lot of those pangs and a lot of the, the, the emptiness that I had in me came from my childhood. I've mentioned it in my videos before, and I have um, quoted guys like uh, Gabor Mate, who's a guy who speaks about addiction. He's very well known in the internet. And it's interesting because Gabor Mate says that addiction is a byproduct of childhood trauma. In other words, trauma causes addiction. And I, I believe that. What Gabor Mate doesn't say is where the trauma actually comes from, whether we directly are involved in the trauma or we inherit that sin nature, which causes trauma and then disease, aka addiction in our lives. Now, when I say addiction and to, you know, to keep it to the, to the realm of this video, I'm speaking about food as an idol, as you using food as a vice to escape, to get a dopamine hit. And so I say all this to say that I'm not speaking to you from up here, but instead down here, I, I, I've been where you are. If you're struggling with some of these things, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to give you my experience and more importantly, to give you some hope and to understand that there is hope for you as long as you're willing to make some changes. The Bible says that because of lack of knowledge, we suffer. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. Yikes. Hosea 4, 6 is basically saying that if you have the knowledge and you do nothing with it, it's just as if you had rejected it. The book of Hosea tells us a scary reality that happens when we forget God's precepts, more importantly, when we know them, but yet we don't put them to action. I believe that the truth will set us free. Jesus said it very clearly. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so clearly, what Jesus is saying to these Jews that had believed in him, which by the way, if you've come to Jesus in faith and repentance, then you are a true Jew. You have been circumcised in the heart. Circumcision for them was physical circumcision for the Christian is circumcision of the heart. So if you have come in faith and repentance, you are a true Jew and you have been circumcised in the heart. So he's speaking to these Jews that believed in him. He said, if you abide in me, right? And more importantly, he says, you know, in, in, 
in my word, if you, if, you, if you believe in my word and you abide, right, you will be set free. So my question to you is, if you have come in faith and repentance, if you claim to have the spirit of God, that ra- ra- the, the spirit that raised Jesus from, from the dead and lives in your heart, then how are you still caught up in some of these vices? Now, that sounds very like I'm criticizing or like I'm saying, you know, why aren't you doing these things? If you're struggling, you're obviously struggling because you haven't been able to do anything about it. But this video is more uh, a way to encourage you and to, to make you come to, to sort of that introspection that hopefully will lead you to some of these truths, right? The truth will set you free. So the question then is, what's the truth? What is that truth that you have in your heart? Is it, is it that you... Uh, are saved and, and that's it, you're just waiting for heaven? Or do you believe that there's actually abundance on this side of eternity? I truly believe there is. 15 years ago, I got liberated from all those things. My life is radically different. And I'm not here to say that it's perfect, but it, there's peace and that peace that surpasses all understanding. And that simply c- came through obedience to his word, which by the way, is what makes us true disciples. And so then the question is, if we want to live empowered lives, how do we do that? How do we access the power of the Holy Spirit so that we have powerful lives in all areas, so that we can win in all areas, so we can get rid of vices, so that we can actually teach our kids with wisdom, more importantly, with congruency? I'm going to go ahead and answer myself that question because you're not here. The question and that answer is communion with the Father. When you look at Galatians chapter 5 and you see the fruits of the Spirit, you see that that very first fruit is love. Right? When, you, when you see love, you say, okay, love to who? Well, love to the Father. Right? When you come in communion with the Father through prayer, through meditation of his word, through obedience, he then unleashes every single one of those fruits of the Spirit. That very last fruit is self-control. And so love and self-control hug all of those other fruits of the Spirit. So if you're looking to unleash those fruits in your life, It comes from being in communion with the Father, and then he unleashes every single one of those fruits of the Spirit, and he gives you self-control. A life of love and a life of self-control is a powerful life. So if you're struggling with getting rid of 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 pounds, and you're a Christian, and you want to tap into that power, number one, I would say bring Jesus into your kitchen. Don't separate this journey of weight loss, this journey that uh, maybe you started a very long time ago. Don't separate it from your, from your walk. Bring Jesus, pray about it, ask him to give you the power to overcome the temptations, the triggers, to bring the right people into your life so that you can get the right kind of coaching, the right kind of wisdom, and you can move forward with power. I know I've said a lot. I hope that you give this video some thought. More importantly, I hope you put these things to action. I hope you pray about these things. And I hope that you overcome any challenges that you have so that you can live the abundant life that we as followers of Jesus get once we are liberated, we abide in his word, and we understand that truth and we put those truths to practice. 